Welcome guys, welcome back to my channel, welcome to Minkoy's Corner, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, as, as promised, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm continuing the series, alright, I'm not going to let it go away. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the other videos I, I started putting out, a little bit of the Crusades, a little bit of um, uh, the Swiss Canal, it's a little bit of an older video, but, uh, so we're back with Napoleon, now what did we learn until now, basically Napoleon's a chat. Uh, he's he's a gangster, man. I mean, the guy, 24 years old general, 34, I think, is when he becomes fucking emperor. So, you know, I mean, it's insane. So, uh, what we ended up learning was that uh, don't mess with Napoleon, especially in Australia. The guy's gonna kick your fucking ass, which he did. You know, he beat dukes, kings, emperors, like, what have we done with our lives? The guy's 24. Anyway. Great story, great, I mean, this is an incredible period in history, um, so interesting. And now, this video, again, Epic History TV, incredible channel, uh, we're watching the Battle of Jena Ostedt, 1806, Napoleon smashes Prussia. Now, I've watched this video, as I said, I've watched the series in the past. Uh, what it's going to talk about, basically, woman bringing whole countries down. History TV, History March collaboration, supported by our sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. In December 1805, at the Battle of Austerlitz, Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of the French, won a crushing victory against the joint forces of Austria and Russia. Napoleon now dominated Europe, able to hand out spoils as he saw fit. Mm. In February 1806, he sent an army led by Marshal Massena to overthrow the King of Naples, who had dared to side with his enemies, and gave his throne to his own brother Joseph instead. Another brother, Louis, was made King of Holland. Hey. His German allies, Bavaria and Württemberg, were elevated to the status of kingdoms. Hey. While Napoleon made himself protector of the Confederation of the Rhine, a new alliance of German states that would contribute 60,000 troops to his army. Those hats, man. In recognition of the new reality, and the HRE. Francis yeah. of Austria formally dissolved the Holy Roman Empire, founded thousand by years. Charlemagne a thousand years before, Fucking but now thousand years, man. without influence or purpose. Austria had been humiliated. France remained at war with Britain, Sweden and Russia. But in the summer of 1806, all eyes were on Prussia. Speaking of fucking women, guess why Russia, Prussia went to war? The Prussian king, Frederick William III, regarded Napoleon with deep mistrust and had been about to join the coalition against him when news arrived of its disastrous defeat at Austerlitz. He was heavily influenced by his wife, the celebrated and popular Queen Louise, yeah. who detested France and Napoleon. She led the influential war party at the Prussian court. Matters came to a head over Hanover, a German state which had belonged to British King George III, been occupied by the French, and given by Napoleon to Prussia as compensation for other territorial changes. Now the Prussians learned that Napoleon had secretly offered to give Hanover back to Britain in exchange for peace. Frederick's advisers now persuaded him that war was the only honourable course. But Prussia then made a basic strategic blunder, sending an ultimatum to Napoleon without consulting its new allies in the Fourth Coalition. Their forces were too far away to help Prussia, who would now face Napoleon's Grande Armée with just the small state of Saxony for support. What the hell does that mean? Mew dude? In 1806, the Prussian army had a fearsome reputation that dated back 50 years to the reign of Frederick the Great. Napoleon, a student of history, 
regarded it with respect. But Prussia's army had been allowed to rest on its laurels. Its generals were old. Its staff work hindered by bureaucracy and personal rivalries. Its movements ponderous and predictable. Mm -mm -mm. Prussian soldiers, however, could be relied on to fight with pride and determination, while Prussian cavalry was regarded as amongst the best in Europe. In October 1806, Napoleon invaded Saxony with an army of 166,000 men and 256 guns. That's insane. 260,000 men? Advancing in three columns, the French crossed the mountain forests of the Thuringerwald, along roads carefully reconnoitred by scouts and spies. Napoleon intended to threaten Leipzig and force a decisive battle with the Prussian army which he believed was near Gera. Mm. The Prussians were, in fact, further west, concentrating near Erfurt, on the west bank of the river Saale. Its commander, the Duke of Brunswick, had hoped to threaten the flank of Napoleon's advance. But wrong-footed by the speed of the French, he now ordered a retreat north to find a new defensive line. On the 10th of October, at Saalfeld, Marshal Lannes' Five Corps clashed with a Prussian advance guard commanded by Prince Louis Frederick, the King's cousin. The Prussian force was routed, and Prince Louis himself killed in combat with a quartermaster of the French 10th Hussars. Damn. Three days later, Lannes made contact with a large Prussian force near Jena and sent news to Napoleon. The French Emperor, believing he'd found the main Prussian army, rapidly issued orders for his corps to concentrate for battle at Jena. Bernadotte's one corps and Davout's three corps were to cross the Sala and fall on the Prussian flank from the north. Smart. But Napoleon was wrong. Lannes faced a 35,000-strong Prussian rearguard, commanded by General Hohenlohe. Oh yeah, I remember her. The chat is for the chat, look at this. ...under the Duke of Brunswick was further north. The fucking... What's his, what's his name? ...straight into the path... Davu. Davu's three corps. Davu fighting a whole army with a corps. I mean, what? Davu. You have to remember the name and the guys. The Battle of Jena began at 6.30 a.m. on the 14th of October, in thick fog. Marshal Land's Five Corps already had a toehold on the plateau west of the town and river. His first task was to drive back the Prussians and win room for the rest of the French army, arriving by the hour, to deploy. His infantry led the way and fierce fighting broke out for the villages of Kospeda, Klosowitz, and Lutzeroda. Meanwhile, Augereau's Seven Corps advanced through a ravine, emerging onto the plateau on Land's left flank, while Sult's Four Corps climbed steep tracks to form on his right. Napoleon joined Lan in the centre of the battlefield, organising a 25-gun battery to support the attack on Wurzenheiligen. The village was won, but then lost to a determined Prussian counter-attack. Careful! On the right, around 10am, Sult's infantry secured Klosowitz, but was counter-attacked on its right flank near Rudigan. A decisive charge by Salt's light cavalry drove off the Prussians, routing their infantry and capturing two enemy colours. As six corps began to arrive on the plateau, its fearless but impetuous commander, Marshal Ney, ignored orders and dived into the fighting around Wurzenheiligen, becoming briefly cut off by a Prussian counterattack and having to be rescued by guard cavalry. 
General Hohenlohe was expecting the arrival of 15,000 more troops under General Ruschel at any moment. Mm. Until then, he remained largely inactive, shoring up his line and ordering limited counterattacks. Just chilling, waiting, but waiting. But he had run out of time. Napoleon had begun the day with just 25,000 men. By 12.30, a steady stream of reinforcements had brought his strength the course up to 96,000. You know, they're able to congregate very quickly. As the Emperor rode past the Imperial Guard, one young soldier, eager to be sent into action... Look at those hats, man! Forward! Napoleon stopped and demanded to know who had spoken, then rebuked the soldier as a beardless youth, <laughs> yeah, like, not to offer advice that, until he too had commanded in 30 battles. Okay, relax. But the moment had arrived. Although the guard, to its frustration, remained in reserve, the other French corps were ordered forward in a general attack. The Prussian army began to give ground. At first it kept its discipline, but then disintegrated into a general rout. Murat's cavalry were launched in pursuit, riding down and sabering hundreds of fleeing Prussians. General Ruchel's two divisions finally arrived at the worst possible moment. They briefly held up five corps' advance, but were soon outflanked, broken up by cannon fire, and charged down by French cuirassiers. Meanwhile, 12 miles to the north, near Auerstadt, yeah. Marshal this, Davout the, was marching southwest, part. expecting to fall on the Prussian left wing at Jena. Instead, he encountered the Duke the of Brunswick's arm. main Prussian army. Yeah. The main Heading army to take up new positions. Davout's three corps, 27,000 men and 48 guns, was about to face odds of two to one. While Bernadotte's one corps, which had orders to support Davout, was nowhere to be seen. What can you, what can you do, man? Davout, when you have such incompetence, the Iron Marshal showed no signs of alarm. He Calm. formed his first division into a defensive line Relax. centered on the village of Hassenhausen. Hassenhausen? His infantry forming squares to repel a series of cavalry charges by General Blücher's advance guard. This is so epic. Fuck man, I know all this. His other so epic. infantry divisions arrived to strengthen the line, standing firm in the face of repeated Prussian attacks. Dude, how the hell did they hold out? But Prussian movements were slow and poorly coordinated. Nor did they use their numerical advantage to try and outflank Davout. At a crucial moment, the Duke of Brunswick was shot through the eyes, a wound that proved fatal. No shit! King Frederick William himself <laughs> took command. Several Prussian units remained uncommitted, but the king, convinced he faced the main French army under Napoleon, dithered. Although, are those, maybe I'm fucking wrong here, but are those, fucking, are those Muslim mercenaries? But they're, because their style of clothing is completely different, or are they just, you know, the guy's fucking sent Around 1215, Marshal Davout counterattacked. The Prussian army turned and fled. Davout, man. Davu had won a stunning victory against the odds, but at a heavy price. His corps suffered 25% casualties. 25%. One man in four killed or wounded. Jesus Christ. While inflicting twice as many losses on the Prussians. I mean, of course, he's gonna gain gratitude. When news reached Napoleon you know? that Marshal Davout had engaged and defeated the main Prussian army, he reacted first with disbelief, then heaped praise upon the Iron Marshal, later awarding him the title Duke of Auerstadt. At least, you know, he got a Marshal reward. Marshal Bernadotte, in contrast, was nearly court-martialed 
Isn't he? Isn't he the one who becomes the king of Sweden at some point? Napoleon's army right began a masterful pursuit of the beaten Prussians, giving them no time to regather their strength. Two weeks after the twin battles of Jena Auerstadt, Napoleon's troops, led by Davout's heroic Three Corps, entered Berlin. The next day, General Hohenlohe surrendered. And then Prinzlau. Germany will enter Paris. At Lübeck, General Blücher and 20,000 Prussians were driven out of the city in heavy fighting and forced to surrender. While 25,000 Prussians besieged at Magdeburg surrendered to Marshal Ney. Yeah, man. Prussia's army victory. had been devastated by a Napoleonic blitzkrieg. Because of a woman. In just 33 days, Prussia had lost 20,000 dead. 140,000 prisoners, 800 guns, and 250 standards. Nice flag, by the way. It was a humiliation that proud Prussians like General Blücher would neither forget nor, nor forgive. forgive. Of course. Unlike Saxony, King Frederick William refused to make peace with Napoleon. He continued to hold out in East That's Prussia, video. trusting in the approaching Russian armies to rescue his kingdom. Yeah, that's gonna work out. Despite another glorious victory for Napoleon and the Grande Armée, the war was not won yet. Yeah, we'll be soon. So, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. This was incredible, I mean, come on. Uh, victory after victory after victory, even towards the end, like 1813, 1814. Um, Napoleon kept winning. The only reason they lost was because they infl they had so many attacks that he couldn't be at this, uh, at every battlefield. Otherwise, he w he would win most of the fights he was in or the battles. But you know, this is and Davu. I mean, come on, the guy. You know, is he showing uh, the same uh, genius intellect when it comes to to military as uh, as Napoleon did? But because he was, you know in the Napoleonic era, he wasn't able to shine as brightly as he he as he uh, as he was supposed to, I guess, uh, uh, or as, as he would have if Napoleon wasn't there, you know, because Napoleon, you know, and then there's another one and another one, and it sort of gets, you know, their, their recognition, their prestige gets sort of miffled in the wind. Um, but yeah, I love this series. I'll, con I'll, I'll continue reacting to it. I hope you enjoy this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, like, by the way.